Hello, hello, hello. College essay guy, Ethan. These these are looking kind of cool, Dev. I'm kind of into these new frames. I got these new frames from a company called Gins. This is not product placement, by the way, but they reduce um, like the glare by or the blue light or something <laughs> by 25%. Hi and welcome. I'm gonna just riff here for like maybe like a minute and a half and then I'm gonna get started because I like to do, I like to run a, a, a tight ship. I don't know how you run your webinars, but it's uh, it's pretty serious around here. Let's get this bread, says Brandon. Say hello, uh, let us know where you're logging in from. I'm always curious to see Sandra saying what's up from Portland. I was there a couple weeks ago. What up, Connor saying save me. Connor, I got you. I got you, don't worry. Um, there's a lot more people than I thought. Do you want, we had 1,054 people sign up for this webinar. So let's see who shows up. Um, somebody's gonna ask, so I'm just gonna tell you now, yes, you'll get a recording of this. Maybe, no, I'm kidding. I'm just trying to get people to stay. We got San Diego in the house. We got Chennai, India, Richmond, Malibu, Florida, Des Moines. This is cool. I won't spend the whole webinar just reading where everybody's from. Hi, Stephanie from beautiful, sunny San Diego. Welcome, you guys. Are, are you feeling okay? Like November 1st has come and gone. I know for me that like Halloween was sort of like this, not, not fever pitch, because you know a lot of students did their work, but some were kind of trying to, you know, kind of skate in here uh, for the deadline. But here we are now. We've got uh, a few weeks left. The UC application just opened. So I'm gonna spend in like 25 minutes, this is like the crash course, like the fastest way that I can get you up to speed on what they're looking for. And um, feel free to type questions in the chat box. Um, what else? What else? Let's get started. Let me share my screen with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna get real small in the corner of your screen. Um, so hey, I'm still here. This is my crash course on the UC personal insight questions. I'm excited to share this with you. We don't call them essays, by the way. The directors of the UCs have really insisted that we don't call these essays because they don't want you to think of these as essays. They want you to think of these as questions. What's the difference? I don't know. To me, an essay is like a short piece of writing and that's what this is. But the first thing that the UCs want you to know, I'm here to tell you, is that these are not like English class essays, all right? I'll get into the content in just a second. First, for context, if you've never met me before, here are some facts that qualify or some bullet points that qualify me to speak to you on this topic. I went to Northwestern. I actually went to the UCs. I went to UC Irvine for uh, for acting. Didn't write the personal insight questions because they didn't have them then. Um, and it was for graduate school. Um, but I spent like 13 years thinking about this stuff, this college essay stuff. And um, I, get, I like to collect certifications, so I do that. I'm basically a teacher. That's really the way I think of myself, a, a writing teacher. So uh, what else do you want you to know? Oh, I got a ton of free stuff on my website. You already know this, but that's just a reminder. You just go to the website slash free, and there's all sorts of stuff, like a free guide to writing your personal statement. Once you finish your UCs, if you want to revamp and work on your personal statement, I got you there. The podcast, if you haven't checked out the podcast yet, there's so much goodness on there, y'all. There's like how to figure out which schools to apply to based on how much money the schools offer. Uh, how to reduce testing anxiety if you're having to like retake any tests, that sort of stuff. Uh, bunches and bunches of stuff. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. If you identify as low income and you would like some free help on your personal insight questions or just on your application, go to collegeessayguy.com slash match letters. You'll get four hours of free help, real deal. That is a real offer, y'all. Um, so you can check that out. I'll, I'll probably say that again at the end, but I just want folks to know that I have like 25 counselors like standing by waiting to help you with your personal insight questions. Uh, all you gotta do is fill out the application. It takes like 10 minutes. All right. And this is my daughter Zola. I don't have an updated picture for you because Prezi was like not my friend today. I don't know what was going on, but this is her and this is me on, uh, and, I'm, and I'm a dad. I guess it's the, my other bullet point. Uh, all right, follow me here tinyurl.com slash CEG UC 2018. I will paste that. I'll put that as the sticky message in the chat box and I'll talk more slowly here so people can kind of jump onto that doc. So if you look in the chat box, you'll see that as well. It's a Google doc. And hopefully folks, there we go. Folks are starting to show up on that. We're gonna have like a ton of people on this doc. I don't think we'll crash it. I don't know how many People can be on a Google Doc at once. If you are if you don't have the Google Docs, if you're not able to access it, don't worry, because hi again, bye again. I'm getting ready to um, take you there in terms of my screen. This is a lot, I'm giving you 16 pages of content here, all in a mere 28 minutes. 
Um, so here's what we're doing. I'm gonna do about 25, 30 minutes of content, mostly on this Google Doc, because it's gonna be much more um, user friendly, easy for me to, for you to see what I'm talking about. You can type questions in the chat box, because at the end we'll do a QA. and uh, I'm gonna cover first what the UCs are looking for. I'm gonna get right to it, I swear, in like 60 seconds. The best place to find your topics, in my humble opinion, a list of topics that other students have chosen, how to brainstorm your content, uh, the, to me, it's like the best brainstorming exercise for your UC personal insight questions. I'm gonna give, show you an awesome set and tell you why I think they're awesome. I'm gonna give you a little PSA for my UC mini course that's coming up in like a few days, November 10th, November 16th. Um, and then we'll do Q and A and I'll review somebody's essays. So, or sorry, personal insight questions. So if you've got some personal insight questions you'd like me to take a look at, I will review probably two. I'll probably have time for about two. Just email them to info at collegeessayguy.com. If you're having tech difficulties, just message in the chat box. My brother Devin, who's sitting right over there, is um, will help you out. All right. So, what are the eight UC personal insight questions? And I'm not going to get into a ton of context. I just want to give them to you so you see them, and then I'm going to get into what they're what folks are looking for because a lot of that stuff you can kind of Google. So check it out. Here are the eight UC personal insight questions. You've seen these before probably already if you've opened up your UC app or if you've Googled UC personal insight questions, but they're asking for things like leadership. Show us your creative side. What's your greatest talent or skill? What's a significant educational opportunity that you've been through? Or is there an, over, an educational barrier you've had to overcome? What's the most significant challenge you've been through? And how did it affect your academic achievement? Six, what's an academic subject that inspires you and important, how have you furthered this interest inside and or outside of the classroom? Um, and then community service, how have you made your school or community a better place? If those don't all work for you, what else? How can you help yourself stand out? Now, the UCs, quick brief history, used to ask two really open-ended questions. Describe the world you come from, how it's shaped your dreams and aspirations, and basically, Tell us about an extracurricular activity or something else about you. What about it makes you proud and how it relates to the person you are? You don't have to write those questions. The problem with those is that the UCs weren't getting the kind of content that they wanted. What do I mean by the content they wanted? Well, they were getting essays that were essays that were more, um, you know, those sort of, they, they felt more like English class essays, more academic papers. And they really just want students to answer the questions. And more importantly, the UCs have 14 things that they're looking for. Did you know that? They're called the 14 elements of comprehensive review. And if this is news to you, why you can Google this, but here it is. Here are the 14 elements of comprehensive review. You can find these just by Googling this. And I'm not gonna go through all of these right now because it's the crash course, but there are things like GPA, test scores, you know, uh, eligibility in your local context, how hard your classes were, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you can kind of see those here. What I'm highlighting in yellow are the elements that I think you can really use the personal insight questions to give a little more context on. So for example, if you've had an outstanding performance in one or more academic subject areas, that's one of the things that they wanna know about that helps differentiate you from the hundred and blank thousand students applying to UCLA, for example. Oh, and quick tip, if you're applying to engineering at Berkeley, math and science is important. So you might consider doing that for prompt six. Uh, achievements in special projects. Now this can mean many different things. I'll share with you a couple in just a minute, but a special project could be uh, an app that you created or a particular volunteering experience or I mean, special projects, it's pretty big. Special talents, achievements and awards also pretty wide, but they wanna know how have you differentiated yourself? Are you first chair oboe or 17th chair oboe? Um, participation in educational prep programs. Um, th that can be kind of broad. It could be an internship that you were part of. It could be a summer course that you took part in. Um, academic accomplishment in light of life experiences. If you've had a really tough time of it, like you've had a lot of challenges you faced, but you've still done really well academically, they want to know about that too. So that's the brief, like, so here's the, first, the, the main thing that I want you to take away from this is like, if you're trying to figure out, should I put this in my essay? Sorry, personal insight question. Ask yourself, does this somehow come back to one of these elements of comprehensive review? Am I helping the UC reader? Am I equipping that reader with enough information to make a decision about how I am different from all the other students, for example, applying to my school, from my school, okay? So always kind of come back to these 14 elements of comprehensive review. 
I've mentioned them just now for like 90 seconds, but it's worth kind of looking at what these are by just Googling this or clicking that link above. All right, so where do you find your topics? I get asked this question a lot. My answer, look to your UC activities list. Now, what is the UC activities list? Well, if you Google UC activities list, you'll see a resource that I created. And I've also linked it right here. Your UC activities list is a place where you can put in all the stuff you've done. And it's broken into different categories. So for example, this student uh, in, under the coursework other than A through G requirements has written machine learning. What is it? You have 160 characters to describe it. It's an undergraduate level online course taught by this person on Coursera.org, offered by Stanford. And by the way, got a 98%. Hashtag no big deal. Computer science summer course, where at Carnegie Mellon, Qatar, uh, learn Java, advanced programming concepts like, oops, <laughs> I don't even know what that is, and polymorphism, achieved a final grade of A+. Plus. Short, simple to the point, boom. Educational prep program. Carnegie Mellon offered the summer college preview program where he learned these things, got some college experience, preparation. This is, by the way, a real application of a student who's at Berkeley now. Volunteer and community service. What'd you do? Migrants' rights. Rotary Club of Calcutta. Doha Beach Clean Project. So each of these describes them briefly. In the little guide that I've linked at the top, I've got tips on how to make your descriptions awesome. These are pretty great. I get some good information about what these are. I say that because like someone else might've been like machine learning. And it's like a course I took in machine learning. And it's like, mm. so giving more context really helps the reader understand, you know, where you're coming from. What sets you apart from any other student who took a course, for example, in machine learning. The readers are reading fast, y'all, but it's still important to spend a lot of time figuring, I mean, not on a ton, I don't think you need to spend like six hours on your activities list, but it is a, it is a good idea to spend some time making sure you've got like strong verbs, for example. I won't get into this right now because we're talking, we want to get to the personal insight questions. But as you're sort of looking through this, this is the place where I think you should find your topics. So when you're trying to think of well, what do I write about, create your activities list, this is like step one, and list all the things that you've done because this could be great stuff that would help you do what? Talk about the, the 14 points of comprehensive review, those things that the UCs are looking for. Talking fast. I'm gonna slow down by like 25%. All right, work experience. Sometimes students ask, is it okay if I put nothing? Yes, you can still get into Berkeley by putting nothing. Awards and honors, similar. You know, he basically has given context for, you know, uh, school team secured third rank in leagues, just a little bit of detail. All right, debating, drum kit, president of robotics. Oftentimes I find students' personal insight question topics come from this section, the extracurricular activities section. Uh, and when I'm helping students like try and figure out what they need to write about, one of the things I'm asking them is like, okay, imagine that you had to show four different sides of yourself. Okay, red, blue, yellow, green. By red, blue, yellow, green, I mean like, what is the this part of you that's different from this other part of you? So like, if you are president of robotics, that's red. If you were like, also did some volunteering and taught robotics, that could probably go in that same essay. That's not gonna be blue, that's gonna be like dark red. Put it in the red essay. Whereas drum kit, well, that's clearly gonna be different. Um, debating is gonna be different too. Basketball, cool, we've got four different things there. Now, a student like this might go, hmm, could I show my academic side through these? Well, maybe through the president of robotics thing, maybe through debating, but it could be that I wanna like pull one of these out and like show my academic side by talking about, for example, the student wanted to study computer science. So that, that might be like his academic essay, or, or sorry, academic topic. There's no like science to this. It's not like, what are the best four topics, okay? It's sort of like, you kind of just have to comb through what you've got and ask yourself, what's gonna show four different sides of me that are going to connect back to these 14 points of comprehensive review. All right, here are some topics that other students have chosen. So this student, surfing for one, overcoming challenges related to dad's cancer, so red and blue, red cross volunteering, yellow. Actually, it doesn't work to use primary colors. I should have used all tertiary colors. Anyway, you get the idea. A clearly different color. Love of reading is clearly different from surfing. I think one of the mistakes students make is that they choose topics that are too overlappy or students who are really interested in engineering are like robotics and then this working with computers and then working with computers in this other way. And then this fourth way is I was working with computers, but with kids. And so sometimes those topics kind of be like, yeah, we get it, you're good at computers. And you've kind of checked that the same box like four times. See if you can kind of expand and check other boxes. Like, you know, uh, this student, for example, which we'll look at in just a minute, robotics club, red, drumming, blue, so creative side, developing an app, 
yellow, gardening, green. Or this one, model United Nations, leadership class, spreading awareness about disaster preparedness and experiencing three very different educational systems. Different thematically, right? Now, in the mini course, what we'll do is, what which I'll tell you about later, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna play this game called, is this a good topic or not? Where students can just basically, we don't have time to play this right now with 268 people, but what we'll get a chance to do is for just like 20 minutes, people will just ask, hey, here are my four topics, what do you think? And I'll just kind of go gut check. Because once you kind of go, once you hear me talk about like this for a little bit, and you kind of sort of see what other students are choosing, you sort of get a sense of which topics to choose. Here are some examples. If I chose four topics, they would be love of writing, red, professional voiceover work, blue, you can Google that, uh, experiences attending 13 different schools, that would be my challenge as one, and then lessons from leading a camp at Burning Man for the past few years, not just past few years, past 13 years. Those would be my four personal insight question topics. Actually, I would have to be applying as a transfer student probably, so I'd have to write the academic subject one. Fun fact, if you're listening as a transfer student, you'll be choosing three topics, and the fourth topic will be on basically what you wanna study and why. All right, so once you've decided on your topics, this is, by the way, the best part of the webinar, the thing that I'm about to give you. How do you brainstorm all the content that you'll need to write these darn things? And this is, I gotta give Devin credit because he came up with this. I don't know who named it. The best extracurricular activity brainstorm I've ever seen, AKA the Beebees. I know it's a silly name, stay with me. If once you've created your list of topics, you fill out this chart, y'all, it's going to be gangbusters. Your, your personal insight questions will write themselves almost. I'll show you how in a minute. So what I've put together here, I'm, this, is, this is a ton of content, but I've put together, so in the first, let me just say that this is basically just five questions you need to answer. Okay, so number one, you just need to bullet point what you did. Okay, so what do I mean by what you did? Well, let's say you, um, you know, you're a basketball player. Well, you didn't just play basketball. You probably like woke up for, you know, uh, you probably did like, you know, and I guess something about football, like two a day. So like rigorous summer training. Uh, what else did you do? Oh, we had to fundraise at one point to, for our new uniforms. We also had to, uh, oh, I, I actually organized the transportation for my high school team. So that's another one. So you can see those words like solo, that, that's not really a verb, but tra uh, trained, trained rigorously over the summer. That's kind of a bad use of an adverb. Um, but uh, fundraised, that's a def another strong verb. Organized, why am I talking about verbs? Because I really feel like they're the key to great bullet points on your BBs and that's gonna to lead to a better personal insight question. So check this out. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Here's my epic list of activities list verbs. I think this is the first time that I've like talked about this on one of these webinars. But basically I was like, man, it'd be useful if students had just a big list of stuff so they can remember what they did. Because it could be that reading through this, yeah, you played basketball, but when you look at this, you're like, oh yeah, I totally did arrange certain events, or I did earn such and such award just by looking at the verbs. So. This list is gonna help you like remember what you did. Next question though, and a lot of students don't think about this question, like what problems did you solve? Could be personal issues, team or family problems, school problems, local, community, national, global. Ask yourself, what problems did I solve? Third question, what lessons did I learn? Or what skills did you gain? And I've got something called the values exercise that can help you brainstorm that. Fourth, maybe most importantly, what's the impact that you had? How do we know that the stuff you did actually affected people, changed people's lives? Or you can also ask, what impact did it have on me? That's more for the lessons learned and skills I gained column. And then how did you apply what you learned? So in other words, how did I take this lesson that I learned from basketball and apply it in this other area? Like, could it be that like play, doing those two days for football or whatever taught you discipline that you were able to apply in the classroom and then, hey, your grades improved as a result. So that's a great example that can kind of pop it out, as I like to say, from the activity that you're talking about and show how you're able to you know, apply that. All right, so the reason I'm putting four of these on here on this doc is that I literally think you should do this four times for each of your personal side questions. In fact, I'd say do it five times. Do it for what you think might be your five topics and see which four work out the best. All right, scrolling down. Told you it was gonna be a crash course. Here is an example, BBs, and the PIQs that it led to. So I'm just gonna let you like scan this for a minute. You can come back to this doc, certainly. Um, but you know, this student, what he did in middle school and ninth grade, he used Lego and RPIs to build robots. 
They did all kinds of stuff. Then he was elected as president, managed lab timing, supervised and taught amateurs, won many awards. Good. Problems I solved. Prevented the club from closing down. That's going to be something that's going to be useful to put into his personal insight question. The reason I'm having you do this, it may feel like busy work at first. It's not. I promise. This, if you do good work, like if you spend 15, 20 minutes doing this, it's going to yield a ton of content. I'd say the biggest thing that I see, like, like disappointment, you know, when I look at a personal insight question, it's not quite there. It's because there's just not enough content yet. Let's take a look at a great example that was written based on this exercise. This is for the leadership prompt, prompt one. As president of the robotics club, by the way, I was president of the robotics club. I find building the robots and creatively solving technical problems to be the easy tasks. Notice he's sort of fast forwarding past, yeah, 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 solving technical problems, which is what most people are gonna write their personal insight questions on. He's like, yeah, that's easy. What's difficult and brings more meaning to my work is steering the club itself. Hook, all right, I'm in it. After three years of battling the geeky male stereotype, <laughs> our club was labeled with, I evolved our small club of five techies into a thriving interdisciplinary hub of 80 distinct personalities, impact, Started with five, now we at the top with 80. Because our club lacks a professional instructor problem, I not only teach members about STEM-related jargon that I learned from hundreds of Google searches, so research he did, but also encourage constructive debates, ranging from topics like proportional integral derivative error correction algorithm, hashtag geeky language to show that he knows this stuff, to how someone should fix her mom's vacuum cleaner. Well, I like that, there's a nice like opposite there. And also there's like a sense of humor. In this way, I provide beginners with an atmosphere that reflects my own mentality. Proactive listening without moralization or judgment. Boom! Okay, cool. I love that we're getting so many values from this. So two things that I want to point out to you. I've already pointed out like six things in these two paragraphs. But this is kind of like a glorified resume. What? Yeah. You're basically getting, I was president of the robotics club, just wanted to remind you all, right? And then he's saying something that you find a resume, like, raised club enrollment from five to 80. And then he's also saying, you know, after, and this would be like a, like a nice full resume, right? But once we didn't have a professional instructor, here were my responsibilities, which could feel kind of like, oh, he's just telling us what he's done. It's okay to do that. I mean, it's good to do that. But then underneath it, he gives us a little bit of meaning. And then by underneath, I mean like underneath this information, he's given us like the, so what? What is it done? It's taught him proactive listening without moralization or judgment. So now I'm getting a sense of like who this guy is, right? His values. I'm so big on values. I also like sharing our insights outside the club. Boom, level up moment. So not just inside the club. Now let's go out. In my math class, for example, I sometimes, this is how he's applied it elsewhere. I sometimes incite intense discussions during lectures on abstruse topics like vectors or calculus by offering examples from my experiences in the lab. The lab. <laughs> In this manner, I not only become an integral part of the intellectual vitality of some related classes at school, this is impact, but also show people with all kinds of interests and backgrounds how to employ technical intuition when solving problems and, in some cases, I even inspire students to join the robotics club, like did I mention 80 people. As an introverted leader, here's another little glimpse inside him behind the curtain. I try to listen first, that's a core value, and use my soft-spoken attentiveness to invite dialogue that improves team chemistry. The most important thing I think you can do on your all like your college application is give the reader a sense of who they're gonna be getting. Like who's gonna be stepping onto campus? How are you gonna to contribute to the campus environment and beyond? We're gonna be getting an introverted leader who listens first, but uses his soft-spoken attentiveness to invite dialogue that improves team chemistry. That's like a series of so what? I'm an introverted leader, so what? I try to listen first. Oh. Cool, so what? Well, I use my soft spoken attentiveness to do what? Invite dialogue, so what does that do? It improves team chemistry. If you're trying to figure out how to impress the reader, because sometimes students ask that, keep answering the question, so what? If you do it four or five times in a sentence, it's gonna like probably get too long, so then cut it down to like three, but you should have these good full sentences. With this ability, I've learned to control the momentum of official debates and basketball matches. Whoa, you just applied it to two other things. Thus, whether my team wins or loses, the external pressure of either suffering a setback or enjoying an achievement rarely affects my team's composure, which helps us maintain our consistency and resolve. You see, you feel him doing this so what? He keeps telling us like why this matters. It's a, a dream. As I visualize myself building projects with a group of coders in the future, oh, by the way, here's what I'm gonna do in the future. 
And, and the UC is kind of like that. Like, how does this all connect to your path? I believe that my discreteness, experience in robotics, practical tenacity, and absolute love for innovating technology will be vital for all my endeavors. So here are the ways that it connects to all different parts of me. <laughs> Fireworks go off. Great, strong start. Is he a leader? Do we get how he's a leader? For sure. We've got specific stuff. We're going to get in his activities list even more ways, even in maybe the additional info section. He's going to expand on other sort of like, you know, specific details that show his impact. But I really get a clear sense of him here. All right. Here's his second one. Creativity. Everyone's got a creative side. Problem solving, original innovative thinking, artistically. Describe how you express your creative side. Sometime during middle school, I began my journey to establish a rock band, become its drummer, and most importantly, grow magnificent long hair. Yes, please. This is awesome. So don't think just because these are like essentially glorified resumes, you can't still be funny and interesting in 350 words. Because th this image that he conjures here at the start is just a gem. So what did he do about it? I enrolled at a local music institute for drum classes twice a week. I didn't have a drum kit at home, so what did I do about it? I'd eagerly wait for those two one-hour sessions of smashing cymbals and double-kicking basses every week. Cool, I'm into it. I was having a great time, but some part of me always felt that I wasn't exploring my musical creativity as much as I could. You see, we're setting up. Over the next few months, as I continued to develop my mastery of the drum kit, percussion became a part of my everyday life. And soon I could sense rhythmic patterns in ordinary sounds. Ooh, tell me more. When no drums were available, I'd start finger tapping in synchronous rhythms on any rigid surface. And before long, finger tapping became an integral part of my rhythmic intelligence. I love the way he says that. Unlike drumming, finger tapping allowed me to incorporate melody into standard grooves by tapping on surfaces that had varying degrees of hollowness. Look where he's going with this. Since it was a percussion style I instinctively developed myself, finger tapping gave me the artistic freedom to create something new but I didn't want to shape my spontaneous finger tapping artistry to master another percussion in instrument like the tabla or machine. So what did he do? Therefore, I decided to invent my own instrument. Level up. <laughs> Equipped with my expertise in robotics and coding, connection to the previous essay, personal insight question, I used electronic items like piezoelectric sensors, PCBs, and transistors to build an instrument that reflected my own finger tapping habits and patterns. It had 10 small pads for my fingers, two large pads for my palms, I chose a Raspberry Pi as its CPU and programmed it to play all kinds of melodies and beats. In this way, I learned how to coordinate my different talents and skills to amplify my total creative output. Love it. My friends and family suggested I name and advertise my invention, maybe sell it to a company. But if I did that, I'd lose the essence of why I built it, which was I built it not to master its musical capacity, but to master my own musical creativity. Lovely. There's so much going well with this. Um, I mean, just the fact that he was able to combine two parts of himself, that's a huge level up moment for this essay because a lot of students are going to write about piano or violin and they're going to kind of stay with piano and violin. So what? How did this? How did he take this and apply it this to something else? Oh, just invent a new instrument. I know that's kind of impressive. So it's like, well, how do I do that? You've got to apply it to something else that's interesting. All right, prompt seven. So what have you done to make your school or community a better place? He says, I've lived in the Middle East for the last 11 years of my life. I've seen cranes, trucks, cement mixers, bulldovers, and road rollers build all kinds of architectural monoliths on my way to school. But what really catches my attention are the men who wear blue jumpsuits striped with fluorescent colors, who cover their faces with scarves and sunglasses, and who look so small next to the machines they use and the skyscrapers they build. These men are the immigrant laborers from South Asian countries who work for 72 hours a week in the scorching heat of the Middle East and sleep through freezing winter nights without heaters in small unhygienic rooms from, with six to 12 other men. Sometimes workers are denied their own passports, having become victims of exploitation. Internal NGOs have recognized this as a violation of basic human rights and classified it as bonded labor. As fellow immigrants from similar ethnicities, my friends and I decided to help the laborers constructing stadiums for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Since freedom of speech was limited, so great. So we set up the problem. Here's the issue, here's what we did about it, which is a great structure. I'll tell you more about it later. Since freedom of speech was limited, we educated ourselves on the legal system of Qatar and carried out our activities within its constraints. So nothing we did was illegal. After surveying labor camps and collecting testimonials, we spread awareness about the laborers' plight at our local community gatherings and asked for donations to our cause. Awesome. With this money, we bought ACs, heaters, and hygienic amenities for the laborers. These specifics are good. They're important. I think it sets this project apart from any other student doing other great work in the world. 
We then educated laborers about their laborers about their basic rights. In the process, I became a fluent Nepalese speaker. Okay, that just got a little ridiculous. As an experienced debater, bringing in debate now, I gave speeches about the exploitation of laborers at the gatherings. Also, I became the percussionist of the small rock band, by the way, we created to perform songs that might evoke empathy and well-off migrants. As an experienced website develop developer, I also reached out to other people in the Middle East who were against bonded labor and helped them develop the mig migrant-rights.org website. Wow. I forgot how impressive this was. Although we uh, could only help 64 of the millions of laborers in the Middle East, we hope that our efforts to spread awareness will inspire more people to reach out to laborers who built their homes. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, what? I don't have, I didn't design a website to help called migrant-rights.org. That's okay. You've got what you've got to work with. Do the very best BBs you can and do your best to, uh, to, to, to fill it with content. Okay. It may not sound like this guy's essay, but that's maybe because you haven't done the same things that he's done, but you can still write a great personal insight question. All right. Here's the last one. What else sets you apart from other students? What's the most logical thing an electrical engineer and his computer science obsessed son can do in the deserts of Qatar? Gardening. My dad and I built a garden in our small rocky backyard to remind us of our village in India, 3,419 kilometers away from our compact metropolitan household in Qatar. Growing plants in a desert, especially outdoors, without any type of climate control system can seem to be a daunting task. But by sowing seeds at the beginning of winter, using manure instead of chemical fertilizers, and choosing the breed of plants that can survive severe cold, we overcame the harsh climate conditions. Sitting in the garden with my family reminds me of the rain, the green fields, the forest, the rhythmic sound of the train wheels hitting joints between rails, to which I play beats on any rigid surface, by the way. And most of all, the spicy food of India. Now, this is a totally, you can tell, this is like a different feel, right? Is this checking off the box for the 14 personal insight questions? Well, let's scroll back to the top for a second. Are we getting a sense of an achievement in a special project? Kind of. Gardening is, in, in his sense, a special project. Is it a special talent achievement award? Yeah, you could say that this is a talent. Is it as clear as the stuff that he's given above? No, because the stuff above is sort of those ding, 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 where he's like, you know, ringing the bell with every essay in like six different ways, right? So this is definitely a different vibe. And I think it's okay to do this if you've got some other personal insight questions that are, as I said, ringing the bell in those other ways. The garden, he says, is my tranquil abode of departure from all forms of technology, regrets about the past, Etc. Unfortunately, my family and I enjoy the garden for a few months, fewer months each year because the harsh climate is becoming dangerously extreme. It's getting hotter. Climate change has reduced our season for growing plants from six months to four. But last paragraph, we've uh, agreed to keep our agricultural practices organic to improve the longevity of the garden's annual lifespan. I've also strived to extend the privilege of a garden to all families in our Indian community, giving space for those who, like us, long for something green. So this is like impact. This is the impact that he's having and hoping to have on his community. So I'll just fast forward to the end. What makes the computer science obsessed applicant from India unique? Balance. Because this is a guy who's computer science, but also gardening is important to me. Okay, so quick recap. I'm gonna just zoom to the top, then I'm gonna give you a little PSA. Actually, let me just do the quick PSA on the course. Um, I'm doing this mini course, which is basically, it's called a flipped classroom model. So what happens is as soon as you sign up, you get access to all the videos, you watch the first two videos, the first two lessons, and then you meet up with me on November 10th, which is Saturday. Uh, and then I give live feedback on personal insight questions. Then we do another follow-up session on November 16th. You write new drafts uh, from four to 6 p.m. That's all here when I'll offer more feedback. And then you do a happy dance because you're almost there. There are students who've gone through this course. This is the third year I think I've led this and students have been able to write great personal insight questions, but you've got to do the work, okay? In this course, that's not what I shared. I'm gonna be talking about, it's like, it's like six hours of video content, ways to level up the BB's columns. I do a, like a walkthrough of all four, of all of the eight, you know, personal insight questions, um, like a step-by-step -step guide. I give a bunch of examples, talk about how do you add a wow factor? How do you know if it's actually awesome or not? That sort of stuff. Um, Oh, and did I mention that the UCs are public universities and that I'm fiercely committed to access? And that there's a suggested cost, but as with all my resources and courses, it's pay what you can, which means literally, you can literally pay whatever you want. I don't know why there's a question mark there. You can sign up there. Devin will pop up a little link for that. All right, just to recap, and then we're gonna look at Ashrita, thank you for sharing your personal insight question. Um, 
So what are they looking for? Answers to the 14 elements of comprehensive review. Are you showing those elements? And you can Google those, like I said. Use your UC activities list. That's where you're gonna to wanna to find your topics. Um, what else, what else? Oh, the BB sections. Once you pick your topics, start using that BB exercise to flesh out stuff. And then we didn't really have time to talk structure because again, it's a crash course. Um, but I'll talk more about that on the mini course. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna do a quick scan of these. I might have time for one. Let's take a look. And then feel free to type questions in the chat box. All right, let's take a look. Combination locks, encrypted messages. By the way, this is for question one, the leadership one. Okay, combination locks, encrypted messages, human flesh, I love it. Although, uh, although means of escape were unclear, one thing was certain. I didn't anticipate spending my Saturday kidnapped by a cannibalistic serial killer and trapped in a basement with my Girl Scout troop. As I watched everyone split into clicks, not even 15 minutes in, and besties morphing into beasts that frustratedly yelled dismissive insults, I regretted suggesting the basement an escape room. I thought this maybe was an escape room as a means of rekindling our group's covalent bond. Okay, so what I've got so far is there's something about a Girl Scout. So the, the top, I'm trying to find the topic. The topic is like Girl Scout troop, and there's something about connecting. Having once been a sisterhood, it was hard seeing us as high schoolers, unable to even cooperate. I wanted to reconstruct the sisterhood on firmer grounds, grounds even California earthquakes couldn't shake up, but everyone's fighting made it challenging. Okay, so the problem was people were fighting, and the one of the ways you're trying to solve it is through the escape room, got it. I insisted we all vote, Results were unanimous. We weren't going to play. So I followed up with my favorite bonding exercise, the circle of compassion, since it's simple, direct, simple, direct, and involves receiving compliments, which everyone loves. Yes, we were having a circle of compassion in the basement of a serial killer. I couldn't think of a, f oh, interesting. Okay, so I got a little confused there, but you decided to do a circle of compassion right there in the escape room with the clock ticking, okay? It was beautiful, and it's been for over a year and a half. From that night in the basement, reminiscing on past memories and sharing current struggles, to the conversations that went on at our solace, Starbucks, where I created a therapy type meeting, cool, another thing that you did, for group support and collective compassion, we shared our struggles. No longer undocumented LGBTQ or body image conscious teenagers, diversity, I like it, we were sisters, each with motivation to face whatever life threw at us, even terrifying escape rooms. I'm digging this. And it all kind of came together in that paragraph. As my perception of problems expanded through my peers, the importance of positivity only grew. My friends gratefully claiming it was their savior, a platform to express hardship. This is impact, great. Admiration and everything in between. Taught me how to better deal with my own problems and how to effectively help people address theirs. If you could get even more specific with that, I think it'd help. Discovering my own deep passion inspired me to expand my effort and create a school psych resource. Awesome. As tutoring VP, I implemented mindset tutoring after completing CBT practicing courses. What? Knowing that students must be mentally driven as well as physically capable to achieve. Yes. By adding positive reinforcement, motivation, and emotional support, basically free therapy, I was surrounded by smiling people, each a reminder of my aspirations to bring such positivity to as many as possible. I love this. This is great. This doesn't need too much. I think this is really lovely. I was a little worried that it was like taking a little long to get started, Ashritha, but I think this is really lovely. What I'm getting is like leadership. Somebody who saw a problem, hey, we're fighting, decided to do something about it. It kind of started, it sounds like in the basement of this escape room or in the basement, which was an escape room. And then things kind of like, you know, got better and better after that. And then I get a sense of like how it like really up leveled in the next part. I, because we're, I'm gonna kind of give you short notes on this. I, I really like this. I think this is working super well. I gave you that tiny note about getting a little bit more specific in the how to better deal with my own problems. Like what kind of problems? Broad picture note, if you wanted to like, pack in some more stuff later on. I guess I would have my, my, my tiny preference would be to just get into the story, the, the so what, a little bit sooner. So my note would be like this. Um, this is, let's see how much of this. This is like 172 words, which is about a, a half of your essay. So my note would be, could you perhaps trim this to say around 100 words? Ben? use the 72 words to expand on, you know, the, the so what, essentially, the below. Um, and if you're wondering, well, what is the so what? Go do a BB's exercise, even though you've already written a nice draft, and sit, go, okay, well, what else could I connect to this, you know, the work that I've done with, you know, the Girl Scout troop? How is that connected to other parts of me? Um, and I would use that content and bring it down into it a little bit more. But uh, this is working really well. If you had to turn this in tomorrow, You'd be okay. Kudos. Nice work. All right.
Katie, a UC educational opportunity. This will be the last one we look at, and then I'll take your questions. And it looks like this one's maybe like a work in progress. And I say that just because of the length. It's about a 231. Use your 350, okay? So here's Katie's essay. While my friends were thinking about medical and law, this is an educational opportunity, right? While my friends were thinking about medical and law school, I was thinking about peanut butter. This past summer, I was drawn to a marketing internship at Big Spoon Roasters, a local artisanal nut butter company that gained a dedicated fan base for their consumer and mission-driven brand and for odd flavors such as almond, ginger, and espresso. Now, I'm gonna just separate these into paragraphs just so that I can kind of get the different sections. My inner foodie told me this would be the perfect job for me. The first task was given to expand their Pinterest account. I knew this would be a way for me to experiment with various ways to get the company's name out and help them grow, be able to take a traditional product and use current technology to take their ideas and nut butters to the national marketplace. Uh, with my previous, a lot of that you can trim. Give us, what'd you do? With my previous knowledge of expanding ideas through social media, oh really, where did you learn those? I'd love to hear more. I was able to create boards that emphasize the company's core values as well as feature their products. Good, this is, keep this stuff. This is like the, here's the what I did stuff. Uh, I watched monthly views slowly increase and eventually surpass more than three times original views. This is impact as well. I'd love to hear more about, whoops, sorry. I hit the wrong button. Um, I like this more than three times, but I think I'd love to hear more about what you did. Okay, so love to hear more on what you did. This is what happens in the mini course, by the way. Uh, this is when I got really excited. I had used technology to connect with other people who shared my love of interesting food and made a difference for the company. Great, so what? Um, so here, um, this is awesome. So what? Hashtag, well, I'll just say, use the BBs to see if you can brainstorm um, some other areas you know, of your life where maybe you applied these lessons. Which lessons? Ah, so glad you asked, but didn't ask. Um, I'd love to know more above here, like what are some more lessons you learned? That's why I'm saying love to hear more of what you did. Because yes, doing social media for them is great, but was there other stuff that you learned about? Organizing projects, time management, these kinds of things. I'd love to. I'd love for this paragraph to be like split into like two or three sections, or maybe let's maybe let's call it two sections, where you've got like some of this. I don't know what those sections are going to be, but like there's like the social media stuff that will be part of like maybe your daily tasks. But then maybe there's like the soft skills that you had to develop, like communicating with your boss and like um, I don't know, making sure that your meetings were really efficient or something. Um, some of those soft skills, so you can kind of split these into two. Um, so I'm not going to give a ton of specific notes on this because I'd probably need to like talk to you more and figure out what other content you're working with before I can make like more specific suggestions. But broadly speaking, I actually think I'm going to put this together here. One, this is the setup. And it's clear, it's fine. Two, um, this is the what I did. And then what I'm going to suggest is you do another paragraph on what I call the what else I did. And then here's the what I learned, which I'm going to say might go right after that. And then, you know, how I applied these lessons. Okay. Now, what am I doing? I'm basically mapping out for you the BBs exercise and like putting in a paragraph. So if you take the BBs and like fill it out and then like turn it sideways, that's kind of what I'm doing. Okay. Could be that you solve problems and then what else I did, you know, problems I solved. So anyway, that, though, that's my advice, Katie, for expanding the content. Because like I said, sometimes when I read an essay, I think, oh, cool, we've got a piece of it, but I want more pieces. I want some more stuff. We can really make it richer. All right. That's what I got. All right. Time for Q&A with about 15 minutes to spare, which I like. All right. Let me give you back my face, which is to say to stop sharing my screen. Hi. Good to see you. All right, um, let's jump into the questions. Let's see. I think I'm going to start from ba -dum -bum -bum. I'm start from the bottom. Actually, why not? Well, no, I'm not going to start from the bottom. Yeah, let me start from the bottom. Let's see. All right. I heard UC schools only care about GPA and test scores. Do these questions even matter? I don't know. I From friends and folks and colleagues who read for the UCs, yes, they're going fast. And yes, uh, the your test scores and your GPA are super important. 
you like you don't even get into the conversation if you don't have awesome ones for like the most highly selective UCs. Um, but from experience, you know, from folks who are readers who know this, yes, they matter. That's the short answer. But of course, I'm going to say that because I'm the college essay guy. I'm totally biased. Um, and Devin, Devin answered that question already. Esther says, is it okay to leave the educational prep programs or the coursework or anything else blank? Yes. Don't, you don't have to fill all those in. As a transfer applicant, can I or should I draw inspiration from my high school experience? You can. I mean, they want to know what you've done. I, I think, you know, lately, like what, and especially for the, when you're answering that question on the academic subject, they want to know what have you been doing uh, so far in college. But, you know, it's been maybe a year, so you don't maybe have a ton of stuff to write about. So if you're drawing on experience to the past, I mean, for some students, they get self-conscious because they're like, well, I've played the piano for like 12 years, but I'm only supposed to talk about stuff in high school. And it's like, you can say you played the piano for 12 years. That's OK. I just wouldn't focus, Nita, on stuff that happened like when you were seven, you know, in every single one. How do I stay within the character limit for the descriptions for the activities and awards section? Ashley, go to that link that I shared. You'll see a ton of examples. Or just Google Common App Activities List Examples or go to my blog and I've got like 80 examples of those that are all within the UC Activities List um, but up up limit. Should you have an interesting introduction to any of the PIQs or is it better to just begin answering the problem directly? Aaron, I would say err on the side of the second because I don't want you to get jammed up on your intro. I want you to write a really solid middle that's got a ton of information. Um, and if you've got time, then give us a fancy opening. But a lot of these essays, or sorry, personal insight questions didn't, right? There's the awesome drumming one that was about magnificently long hair, but you know that, that's not the most important part of that personal insight question. It's really about how this guy took something that he was interested in, took it to the next level, and then took it another level up. So let's see. I feel like the UCs prefer straight to the point PIQs. Yep, and they just explain what you did and learned. Yep, well, private schools enjoy more creative writing that shows how your brain works. Dylan, kind of true, but do you notice how you can do both? Like both of the, like all these personal insight questions that we've seen uh, are doing both. So there's, they're kind of fun. Even Ashritha's, you know, it's like there's a little kind of fun opening there, but then that's why I'm saying like, go ahead and get into like the what you did and what you've learned and how you've applied that stuff. So yes, what you said, Dylan, but both are possible. So it's not an either or. Hannah asks, do universities prefer students talking about localized experience, like community volunteering, or are they interested in global engagement? There's, this is one of those, there's no answer to this. What do you prefer? You know, there's not like, if you do this, you'll get in. There's no like magic formula here. Talk about the stuff that you've had the most engagement in that's changed you. Now, if you've done both, could you find some way to combine them? Could you do like the first half of the year? Because you're talking about personal insight question seven, maybe, how you've benefited your community locally. And that inspired me, next paragraph, to globally do this. So you can kind of do a both and. These essays are great, but they don't sound like a teenager. Isn't that a challenge? <laughs> Why don't these sound like a teenager, Pamela? I think this sounds like a really smart teenager. Um, isn't that a challenge? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, I think that these sound like a really smart teenager and I'm biased because I work with really smart teenagers all the time. Um, but uh, should my UCPIQ answers have vulnerability? and include my flaws or present me in a more professional, positive light. Vulnerability, it scores a certain number of points, I think on the common app personal statement that I think the PIQs are like, I would say, I would say that it's like not the top priority. So in my guide to like what I think goes like the, the great personal insight question test, I, I, I would say that vulnerability is not one of the top four qualities that you need to show. Now, if you've been through some challenges and you wanna show vulnerability by discussing the challenges you've been through, then I think it's appropriate there. But I don't think this is one of those things where it's like, they need to see your heart. It's more like, what have you done? It's gonna set you apart from everybody else at your school. And I know that's kind of stating it bluntly and crassly, but that's broadly speaking. I hope that you'll take that away from this webinar. Would taking an online course, asks AJ, from a university that I'm applying to be any more beneficial than another online course? Not in my experience. Nope. Uh, he hopes to spread his privilege to people without privilege. Doesn't this raise a red flag? Um, it depends on what you mean by privilege, Connor. Um, maybe tell me more what you mean by privilege. Hannah, can I base two essay prompts on the same experience or should I show variety with the prompt experiences that I include? If you can, Hannah, combine those two, whatever the two facets of it into one PIQ, because then you can kind of show more variety. Just my, I guess it's kind of a preference. Akshi asks, is it better to have all essays that are completely unrelated to each other, different activities, for example, what would two essays about bio and biology related activities look like to a reader if the student's applying for a bio major? I mean, I think it's okay. I just don't think you should do like four bio essays. So if you do two, you know, it's not the end of the world. 
It's just strive for variety when you can. Lawrence asks, in general, should my essay relate to what I want to major in the future or should I talk about myself and my passions? I don't think that's a, I don't like that question. And the reason I don't like that question is because I don't think you have to do either or. So if you want to major in something in the future and you really want to talk about it and you think that that'll help answer one of these uh, personal insight questions, then do it. If you want to talk about yourself and your passions, then do it, but make sure it's connecting back to the 14 points of comprehensive review. Joshua asks, how do we know whether we aren't writing about overlapping ideas and things? In other words, how do we know if we are checking red, blue, et cetera? Um, well, are they different topics? Ask yourself that. You know, Is it debate and like teaching debate? Because those sound like both have the word debate in them, right? So one of the ways to do this, actually here's a little more nuanced way, is you take the values exercise, which you can Google values exercise, and you can look at what values are being revealed in each of your personal insight questions. And if you're revealing the same values in all your personal insight questions, yeah, it could be that they're a little bit too overlappy. Chloe, is a longer seminar appropriate for counselors or is it intended just for students writing essays? It's totally great for counselors and for parents. Please join. Isabella, do you have any other webinars for the common application essays? Yeah, I've, I've got a whole course. Um, Devin, maybe you could just pop up the link for that. Uh, maybe, oh, he already did it, cool. So there's a whole course that I put together on the Common App Personal Statement, and then a whole separate course for the application and all the supplemental essays. And that one's also pay what you can. How can I send you my essay? Michael, please don't send me your essay, because if I said yes to you sending you my essay, then 235 people would send me their essays. So I can't offer you, I would say take the mini course, and then maybe if you're in the few students that are picked, because I can't, you know, work with every single student who sends me their essays because four times however many students sign up would be impossible, but that would be a good opportunity to do it. Uh, should you see essays be less narrative based? Good question, Kate. It depends. There's a short answer and then in the mini course I give a 25 minute answer. So um, it depends on if you face challenges or not. And the short answer is if you face challenges, then maybe it should be a narrative. If you haven't faced challenges in that particular thing, then I don't think it should be a narrative. I think it should be a montage. Um, Kate says, these essays seem more self-promotional to me. Totally. Do you feel the essays sh she sees should be more? Yes. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. Ali asks, what editing process do you use moving between drafts? How do I describe that shortly? In between drafts, I usually go back to the BBs because I'm like, do you have enough content? If you do have enough content, then you can Google this, five steps to revising your essay, college essay guy. So just Google five steps to revising your essay. And there's a little blog post that I wrote on that about how to revise based on the first sentences in each paragraph. So check that out. If you can't find that in like a couple minutes, Ali, message us again and Devin will send you that link. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Kate, re-asking this. Yes, I do think that they're more self-promotional, but I think of it this way. I don't think of, don't think of it as self-promotion, Kate. Think of it as like informational. So imagine there's a spectrum of like poetry, like beauty, like, Look at the world, it's so awesome. And then like, hey, I need you to tell, I need to tell you some stuff about me and what sets me apart from all the other students in my school. I think, you know, the common app is like, you know, maybe in here, you got some cool, like life is beautiful stuff, poetics. I don't know what that is. I, I still think you need to be revealing core values. And then you've definitely got some informational stuff in that personal statement. But I think the UCs are like more over here. Maybe there's like a joke in there or a funny line or a first line, but we want to kind of live over in this like, like I said, glorified resume. You could totally do bullet points for these too. The UC directors have said this. They're like, you know, people have asked them at conferences, like, could students submit bullet points? And they're like, yes. And they like, they look down the line and they're like, are those cool with you? Yeah, they're cool. So I don't recommend you writing bullet points, but I do recommend you brainstorming with bullet points through the BB's exercise and then writing an essay. I feel like I've been watching too much John Oliver or something, which is a good reminder to everybody to vote tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else. Hi, I think you're really cool and funny. Thanks for making this webinar. Thanks, Leticia. That's really sweet. Hannah, will the chat questions you discuss be present in the video you post later? Are they? Are they? They are. Sweet. I'm looking at Devin. He's like my Paul Schaefer, which most of you will not get the reference to. Devin is not bald with little glasses and go like this a lot. That's not Devin. Leticia asks, do you think private schools care more about continuity and passion? See, already this is a problematic question because it's not like an either or, right? but I'll answer anyway. Uh, do you think private schools care more about continuity and passion in just one topic slash all activities related to one subject academic interest, whereas UCs care more about variety? No, Leticia, I don't think that's true. I think that the UCs are looking for the 14 things that they say, and I think the, uh, the private schools are looking for 
Broadly speaking, they're looking for what what value will you contribute on the college campus and beyond. And um, specifically speaking, you'll need to research that school uh, and find out what they're looking for and then put it in the YS essay. Um, this was helpful. You're welcome, Genevieve. Ah, Connor says, by privilege, I mean access to resources that others may not have. In this case, his privilege is gardening and he aims to provide others the ability to garden in his PIQ. Yeah, but it sounded a little bit cynical the way you were phrasing it, Connor. I, I think that if he's gardening and he wants other people to be able to garden, that actually seems like kind of cool. But it seems like, I don't know, like there was some kind of negative thing that you were attaching to that. And so I'm, I guess I'm confused like about the so what. So I don't think it's a red flag to say like, I'm gardening and like, I want to share gardening with others. Like, I don't think, now I guess if your question is, is that a red flag? I don't think that's a red flag. Amanda, can you clarify the difference between approaching the UCs and supplements? Is it the UC essays should be more straightforward and match the 14 points? You got it. In fact, if there was a quiz and that was a multiple choice answer, that would be the correct answer. Uh, the supplemental essays for all the other schools are very different. And for that, go to the course on the supplemental essays. By the way, did I mention it's pay what you can? Uh, I understand if you have special circumstances that affected your grades, you can explain it in a separate space. Yep. Can I use the personal insight question as a way to show the challenges that I face more elaborately? Yes. If you don't want to use up a whole personal insight question for that, then just put it in bullet points in your additional info section, because that's totally where you can do that. So you're right on both counts. Counts. What's the most significant challenge they faced happen when they were 10, but they still, well, oh, what if the most significant challenge they faced happened when they were 10, but they still live with the repercussions? Give us a sense, Janet, of what those repercussions are now. So it could be that the first sentence or two is like, when I was 10, this thing happened. Little did I know that I would face repercussions, you know, years later, even until recently. I mean, that's kind of a cheesy thing. Don't literally write that. But that gives me a sense of like, ah, this thing happened. Or you can be kind of vague when it happened. You know, you don't have to say that it was when I was 10. You know, I could say a few years ago or several years ago, this thing happened. Because if the repercussions are live, then the challenge is still live, just because the inciting incident or the stimulus was, was years ago. What if you don't have much leadership experience? How can I show I'm a leader? Good luck. No, I'm kidding. Uh, go do some leadership stuff. You got like three weeks. Uh, also kidding. Look at the verbs list. This is like my real answer, Kara. You remember that verbs list that I flashed up? It's like on the BB exercise, which Devin, maybe you could just pop it in. Oh, I'll just share it right here. You Leadership can be mean so many different things, Kara. So don't stress because you have done some leadership related stuff. But make sure you use strong verbs in both your activities list and in your personal insight questions to show what leader, first of all, ask yourself, like, what does leadership look like to me? Because like that one student, um, he mentioned listening. Cool. Like a, listen, a leader who listens. That's, that's a leader that I, I want to be around. So ask yourself, what does leadership look like to me and how have I led? Use verbs to show those. Jiwan says, I don't even know how to start my essay. Like, I know what to write about, but not how to write about it. Could you give me tips on how to start? You haven't done the BBs exercise yet, Jiwan, so you're not allowed to start yet. Um, because I just shared it with you 25 minutes ago. So you, how you start is by doing the BBs exercise and answering those five questions. I promise you, if you spend like 25 minutes doing that, you're gonna ideas are gonna start to percolate. Also, like I said to Adam or somebody earlier, don't get stressed about the opening. Just boom, get into it. What's most important for your personal insight questions? You can quote me on this. Is the middle, the middle where you're talking about what you did, what you learned how you connected it to other parts of your life. Come back and write a fancy opening later. Jamie, how do UC readers verify the personal insight questions are factually true? Mm -hmm. There will be auditing that sometimes happens, but they're not often gonna know, but do not lie. Uh, what if a reader has doubts? Uh, again, every once in a while, the essays, the applications will get audited. They'll contact the counselor to like check up on stuff. I'll just leave it at that. The example essays seem to be from super special circumstances that most teenagers don't have and less typical for the average student. Let me know if you have any question about that, Jonathan. Miranda, if I had a major, so no, I'll actually answer. What I think you're asking is like, well, what do the normal kids do? The answer is you make the best of what you've got. How? Through the BBs exercise. And some students are gonna have like ridiculous, like OMG did this, 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 this. Other students are gonna be like, oh, this is like pretty cool stuff. And other students are gonna have stuff that's like, eh. Okay, so what do the students here do? 
the short version, I answer this in the mini course, but the short version is you make uncommon connections, which is to say, if you've got a typical like topic like basketball, you make sure that you don't talk about hard work, discipline and perseverance. You actually find uncommon ways to talk about those things so that those actually stand out. That's the short version of that. I don't have enough time to get into that because we're at time. Um, Miranda, if I had a major leadership experience in middle school, would that still be okay to write an essay on? Or no, because it occurred before high school. I'd stick to high school stuff. You keep saying to set yourself apart from the other students at your school. Does one reader read for all students at a school? No, not necessarily, but they are taking that into account. They are looking at like what number of APs you took relative to other school students at your school, et cetera. Does working as a poll worker tomorrow count as involvement with the community? I'd say so, Jorge. I was homeschooled till freshman year where I transferred to public school. Is that okay to talk about uh, since it wasn't that recent? Um, it depends. I mean, again, Chloe, if it had repercussions and like impacts on your life right now, then I'd say, um, yes, talk about it now, but make sure that you're talking about how that's having an impact on your life now. All right. For the sake of time for everybody, I've got to call it because it's been an hour, but um, I hope you'll join me on the, the mini course and uh, you'll get a recording of this webinar and uh, good luck. Bye.